The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, the 27th of June. We're looking at the Dow down five at 39,121. Kind of stalled in this lower range. Um, the nine per moving average is good. Uh, it's at a peak C in the daily, but the DIA is already at a peak D. The futures, the YM, already at a peak D. I'm watching this very closely. My suspicion now, let me just go through the market by the way I'm seeing it. So the Dow is telling me that based on the weekly chart, we're still just in this consolidation phase. Actually, we've been in the consolidation phase since May regarding the Dow. May the 20th was the um, high of uh, right here, uh, 40,077. But if you really look at it, uh, in a uh, weekly chart, you'll see that the high in the 39,000s that was done in April, we made a cup formation. And this is the exact opposite of a pattern I was talking about a moment ago. That's the dreaded H, the lowercase H, where you come down sharply, make an arch formation. But you could then have a second arch formation that just tells you you're making a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m because you haven't taken out decisively a left side low. Well, if you turn this upside down, that's exactly what we're looking at here. You're looking at, um, let me just move this away. You're looking at a reverse, an upside down Y, reverse Y. So this, the W, soft W formation, there's your U shape, and there's your second U. But this time it's stalling. It's taken four sessions from the low, and it's still not breaking out sharply to the upside. So I'm suspecting that we're looking at a stalling motion. What tells me that? Look. The S&P, I don't know where I typed that, but let me try to put it back over here. The S&P uh, made a 505.53 all-time high six sessions ago. It, too, is kind of stalling here. And if you're looking at the technicals, the 9 is still very strong over the 14. That's really good. But look, the MACD is almost turned negative. The stochastic's gone from the 90 area to the 82. It's still good, but it's starting to pull back. The unbalanced volume, the blue line's failing. The gray line right here, let's see if I can change that with a pointer. Right there, the gray line, that's the RSI, relative strength index, is starting to slip a little bit. So on a short-term basis, I suspect that we're looking at some kind of a digestive phase that's, uh, that's ongoing. But if you look at the weekly chart, that is still really good action. All right. And the monthly chart, this is I'll, I'll do this tomorrow's technical Friday. Maybe I'll do it then. But there's the inside track repellent zone. We went to the bottom line, the pink line. The green line is really the breakout line. And that says, uh, and the 5630s, that will be fantastic. We're at 54.82. There's a long way to go to get there, right? So digestive phase, I think, is unfolding. Q, Q, Q says digestive phase. Well, this is um, eight sessions since the 486.86 high, and we're really just stalling. We're not breaking down at all. But if you look at the technicals, they just aren't to weaken a little bit, but the nine is still strong over the 14. That is something not to refute. That is good. And the month, the weekly chart is strong, and the monthly chart is only in leg C. And the Chapman wave, we're always looking for at least four higher peaks in a buy mode. We're in a buy mode. We should get to a leg D sometime in 2024. That makes this whole area of the 440s. It's a 481.68 uh, right now. Uh, this whole area going to the, the base of 441, uh, 443, sorry, 443.06 was the low of May the 31st. That's kind of your first major support level if there is any sudden whoosh to the downside for whatever reason. IWM has gone positive now. It is up 95 cents at 200.99. It's called 201. That pink nine period moving average is attempting to flatten out, and then it has to go positive green. It's got a long way to do that unless there's a big spike above this inside track repellent line. So let me tell you where that is. That says at any point in July, if the IWM actually trades for two out of three sessions above 204.80, I'm going to say 205. 205 
that's going to be a nice turnaround and su suggest strongly that it's turned the corner and it wants to go back to the upside. Key support of the 196, 200 period exponential moving average. And we're going to go to the SMHs to see if they've turned positive. Nope, they're down 10 cents at 260.81, holding quite nicely, but really, uh, we've been short for a couple of days. We remain short. Um, it's a tough one, boy. This has been the, the wrong thing to go short on, but let's see if this peak D, uh, this is the third peak D in about a month, and the daily chart, and this is the one that says there should be a deeper pullback this time. And so far, that's true, but it's, it's, it really needs to follow through to the downside. You have to see 252 to 250. It's a 261 right now, and that has to be soon. It has to be by next week, and then you're going to get a pullback. All right, let's go back to um, uh, I want you to bonds. Bonds right now came back very nicely. They were weak. Now they're up a half a point at 119 and a half. Um, that's look, this is the Chev Wave inside track repellent zone. Um, does it become a support zone in July as the bonds start to trade in the 122 area? We'll see. I mean, you need that because you want to see uh, Toll Brothers and others in the area of uh, housing hold that holding well, but they, they, to, to actually see them rally, I think you need to see lower rates. Uh, let me go to crude oil. And there was a question about uh, um, Exxon. So, yeah, crude oil, this is a very quick B to C to D. B, one day rest, leg C. Peak C, one day rest, leg D right now. Usually that says you're in for a bit of a, not a major sell, just a bit of a rest period because the speed that it takes to get to A to B to C to D uh, says maybe you just need a rest before you can go higher. So the stochastics at 91%, that's great. Back D is good. There's nothing wrong. It just says maybe there'll be a little bit of a pullback. It's holding very nicely. The 84 area is very strong resistance. Anything I've missed? Okay, now I've got the questions. So the questions I had before when I did Tommy's show, um, let me just go through. Just well, I'll review very quickly. XLE uh, has now pulled back a little bit. It's a 90.73. I said that the nine period moving average had flipped to L today. But I have to wait for the whole day until 4 o'clock to see if it confirms. But it says to me that it's attempting to have a move to the upside. Um, this uh, channel to the downside should be narrow to have a big breakout to the upside. But if there is a move into the 90, what did I say, 92? Yeah, 92.50 area over the next, uh, it needs speed. So I'd say by midweek next week, it's a weekly chart. That will be very good. And then maybe you'll actually go see it go from green to pink and then quickly back to green in the nine period moving average in the week. In the monthly says, hey, everything's still good. It should go to a leg D. This is a consolidation phase. So there's another trend line that I didn't draw um, in in um, the XLE. And this is one from here. Okay. So that is your resistance level. I like to be as conservative as possible. I don't mind going through any candles if it's important. Look, I'm just going to the highs over there. Yeah, that just says, yeah, that confirms. I, I need to see 92, something like 92.70 would be a really nice move for the XLE. Um, okay, then as we were in the process of looking at, oh, Qualcomm to see if we get to the 182 level, trading at 187 is up 33 cents. But right, I'll talk about it as soon as I return. Qualcomm is uh, at a peak D in the daily, peak D in the weekly, leg C in the monthly. So it should still go higher in 2024, but it should pull back first. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. We're back. I just I, I wanted to do something, but I was so busy with all the other questions that I had, I didn't really finish it. There was an alternate count in the one bit of charts. It put you in F slash C. That's why when you got that sharp pullback, I was saying, wait, something's wrong. Everything looks like it should have been a top. Well, it was a top, and it went right to the two, one minute, 200 period moving average support in the E mini, S and P E mini. It went to peak A, peak B, peak C, and now you've got your D. Now you're having a bit of a rest, and now you've got the peak E in the five minute chart but wait a minute I couldn't understand why it was dropping so sharply at peak C in the 10 minute chart because in a buy signal it's usually even though with the um, economic reports it, it, somehow usually the 10 minute chart does fall for the D now it's gotten to the D so now we can see what kind of a pullback because if the pullback holds and there's further buying that's going to be quite important right so we've done that now let's go back so let me just tell you Dana to see the Qualcomm charge on the daily uh, make this pullback you you're looking at 82 uh, 182 well 191 is the 14 period exponential moving average support in the in the weekly chart but it's really this candle right here that I'm looking at. This little cluster with the candle of the 17th of May, 199.99 was the high, 193.28 is the low. That's your first real support level in the daily chart that I'm looking at. And the stochastics are already gone to 9%. MACD is still expanding in the histogram, so I do see lower. I think it's a little aggressive, 182. I'm just going to say to you, it's 197 right now. I would not be surprised if Qualcomm uh, it could have a little bit of a bounce. Depends on how the how high the bounce is, but I would not be surprised to see if the 193 level is going to be critical as support and what happens next. So go one step at a time. Uh, let's go to the next question, which was Kovana CVNA. Um, no, I don't even know if it was a question. Yeah, so I had drawn this in the other day. It had 129 point. Uh, zero zero round number high on the 1st of May. It made a peak C1 with a fractional lower high as C2. That's like a D, but with all the technical suggests they should actually have gone to 129.01, just a little bit above to make that D and it failed. So I used that and I said, okay, that's pulling back. Now it's been a really nice rally to leg C, and I'm calling that not an alternate count D because all the technical suggests Covana at 92, 35% 
uh, in the stochastic has uh, enough, it's not just residual strength, it's actually core strength, and that will take you to a leg F, I'm calling it an F in the weekly chart, and a leg E in the monthly. The key thing is that the 118, 119 to 116 is key support if there's any sudden major sell-off in the general market. So yes, it's still looking good, and I think it, at C, I think I'm still looking for a pullback, and then a minor high, higher high. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole 134 area, 33 to 134, becomes a really strong resistance with Carvana. So just on the shorter term, a uh, question came in. Yeah, I, I, I did this before. I'm going to do it again. I did Apple. I said it also made a peak C1, C2. That's the same thing as Carvana in the sense that it failed to make a D, but it acted like a D with the stochastic and everything, and it's pulled back from that high of 220.20, it's trading at 230.71, digesting the gains. It's only a peak B in the weekly chart. And that says it should still go to a higher high with C and then a higher high D. And the monthly chart is only a C. It should still pull back for a peak C and then a leg D. So all that's really positive. It has huge support going all the way down to 194 um, if there's any sudden major sell off for whatever reason. Um, that's uh, Apple. Um, Amazon was breaking to a new high. In leg C, and that's almost the same thing that we were looking at in Carvana. This is a C. I'm not calling it an E, even though I could call it an alternative count. I think it's a C with a pullback and then one spike to a D and then be careful. But it's broken out in the um, weekly chart. I'm calling this a leg B right now. And a leg C in the monthly charts. Amazon's very strong. It has 189 to 186 strong support on any pullback. Let's go to, oh, Microsoft. We've been anticipating a leg D uh, in the daily chart. We've just got that today, leg D. It had a 456.00 round number high, but the day's young, so that doesn't mean. But yesterday did have a round number, 449 open, and it went higher to leg C, D. And now it's continuing that leg D, and it's in the uh, resistance area but it's in a leg, see a neck. I, I, tomorrow's Technical Friday, I hope I remember, but I want to do the Chen Wave Stalk Lake Formation, this pattern that I've drawn right here that goes back to when I used to hand chart uh, stock, uh, the stock market. Um, yeah, so that all I'm saying is, is it's done everything we wanted uh, just for uh, clarification. Uh, we, we are still long from 338. We've had some nice trading positions. I should have, the moment it turned positive there, I should have said, let's have a trade because it should still go to higher highs above 433.60 with this uh, stalk leg formation. I didn't do that. We missed out on a good, um, well, a good 20 points at least of adding to our gains. But that's okay. Meantime, back at the ranch. What else was it? Uh, Q, what was the AQST? AQST. AQST, AQST for Dan, AQST, oh, nice pop to the upside. I think, did we talk about this the other day? I don't remember. Made a peak E in the weekly chart up in the sixes, plummets down to the low of yesterday of 2.24, and now it's up a uh, nice percentage, up 4%. Um, now, this is what you look for. If this is going to sustain the rally, you can't have these single day that look fabulous where all the technicals are good uh, because price, the, the weight of evidence says that the selling pressure from the high that was made back in March, was it April or March? March is the week of the 22nd at 6.23. I may as well just put that in. 6, 6.23, 3, 2, 2, 2, 4. Um, that selling pressure is so intense that these sudden pop-ups, unless it's news, it's, it's a, it's a, um, it is a biotech, a quest of therapeutics and biotech. So it, everything responds to whatever the FDA approval, whatever, whatever phase it is in the approval process, approval process. So this needs much more. The 200 period moving average of 286 is really your bench benchmark in the sense that. If it starts to close, there, it has to do that for about seven out of eight or nine sessions. It, uh, no, that's, that wouldn't work. For about three out of five sessions. In other words, it needs to turn the 285 level into not just a magnet line, but a propellant line. 
and and that's going to take a while because once it gets there, it's going to. You'd love to see it go from um, if you entered right now. This is a great percentage game, but that's not the point. The point is you're looking at these as long term buy and holds or or enter and add to, and this is. Even now, I'm not saying this is the start of the next move. I need more evidence, but it is a nice bounce, certainly. Next question was, I wrote it down. Um, yeah, so let me just do this one more time. PKG, because Packaging Corporation of America, I use because packaging, let's face it, the packages are going out and the company is making new all-time highs. I mean, people are buying. Amazon's working and it should help. So, You've got leg D in the monthly chart. It's not a great candle so far, but it's a leg D. I've got an F in the weekly chart. If I do a vertical test, it says, you know, this could be ready for a little bit of a digestive phase. We should go inside me. Take a press. So you've got inside track, repellent zone. It's hit it exactly. Now it's pulling back. It was down 2.80 to 183. It needs to hold 178. But so far, it's just digestive. It's going to pop back. Now it's Nine, SVs up 10. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. 
Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. So the uh, Exxon Mobil, XOM is a symbol trading down 23 cents at 114.18, has the same pattern as the XLE, and it's almost the same thing. So at 114.19 right now, uh, this is a single leg A. Now, this is different because the stochastic's already gone to 83%. The MACD's opened up. The relative strength of the little gray line in the daily chart right here is improving. And for two sessions now, you've had the L. That means that the 914 has crossed positive green. So that's good. And the 9 period moving average in the weekly chart is really good. So I'm going to suggest the same thing here, that um, at 114 Point twenty-two. I don't know if you're long. I can't even remember now who asked me about it. Um, if uh, 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 well, I, don't, I can't remember. I can't see it right now. But I would just say yes. This is a, this could be the start of a move that moves. It, it either moves very quickly because it needs to get to 116.70. It's 114.22, and it needs to do it by Tuesday or you know. Oh wait a minute. Yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Um, and that would break this down channel, one of my favorite patterns, only if it's very narrow. This is a little bit wide, so it's going to take more effort to do. And the monthly chart is a cup formation. I, I, the question, of course, is this a G or is it an A? I mean, that's a G says, oh, my God, you got to be careful. A says, are you kidding? You want to buy? It's a two polar. It's like the Arctic and the Antarctic. They're just two polar opposites. So all I can say is you go one step at a time. The daily it held the 200-period moving average as a springboard. It's turned. It's a, this is like a buy signal right now. Even though it's only a leg A, I need. I, can't, I have to wait a day, another day, before I can actually say it is a buy signal. I'm just saying it has all the ingredients, but certainly in the 116s that'll confirm. Especially if it's a, if it's A, that's really good. But if it's B, that's fine. But the daily, uh, the weekly chart, uh, failing at that peak B and making this pattern says uh, it's going to take a little while, and it. it to get to 120, which is the candle that I'd look at as a target if it was able to get to the 116 and a half area very quickly. But the week, weekly chart helps the monthly and the daily chart helps the weekly. So this is good. Where's the key support? 112 ish area. That, give me a yell if it goes under 112. And that kind of corresponds with uh, crude oil acting so well as well. Um, Oxy, Oxy right here. Oxy is Occidental Petroleum. Now, that had a little different. This has already gone. It's quite mature. It's gone to a D already from the daily, and it's only a leg A in the weekly. This is a little different. I actually said that I think Oxy is not as good a chart as Exxon, and I can't remember what the other one was. Chevron, I think, CVX. No, no, Chevron was the better one. Yeah, so that's one of the better ones. Uh, then where was the next question came in right here? Uh, where Q, did I do AQT? Yes, A. Yes, I did. So that's important. I did that, did that, did that. Okay. So I, I said I talk about um, the action that Microsoft could be telling me, giving me clues as to what happens in the general market over the next week and a half. Um, I'm going to do more tomorrow, but I just wanted to say for the, someone who came in with a question about the the mega mega sevens, those magnificent sevens. Yeah, this is a leg D, and we did get a round number high at 456.00, but I said to you it's a daily chart, so we can't even talk about it because uh, it could change what it has. It's gone to 456.17, but yesterday it had a round number open at 449, so I'm going to be watching it. Remember all those round numbers in the semiconductors that I said are fantastic clues to the fantastic sell-off that they had? Um, and that was in April, and then they came back, and some had round numbers at the low, and then ran very strongly to the upside. So this is all something to watch very closely. A couple of questions also came in. Yeah, so uh, one of the things, so wh where do you stand? So we've raised cash. We've raised cash because there are certain stocks that in the longer term are positions that we really, I would like to have. I'd like to have a little more in the brokerage area. I'd like to have a little bit more in the tech area. I'd like to have more in the, the IWM is on my list, that that group. Um, the, 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 the bank sector, we've already gotten Bank of America took quite a hit yesterday, but it made an all-time high, just not an all-time high, a, a yearly high just the other day in the 40, I think it was 40.30 area. Now it's down at the, Today it hit 38.33. That's quite a pullback. So it's digesting gains leg D in the weekly chart. It looks, oh, we, I should say we've been long for quite some time. Um, it's doing very nicely. But the XLE, 
uh, XLF, I'm sorry, XLF for financials, that's kind of at the lower range. If you look at the weekly chart, that doesn't mean a thing. It's still holding quite well. But I'm looking at, certain, for instance, Goldman Sachs um, should be a leader when the, when this market starts its next big phase, whenever that is going to be. And so far, it's just digesting from 471.48 all-time high back on the 20th of May, the day the Dow gave its sell signal. This has also done that and is still digesting these gains. Weekly charts says, what are you what are you worrying about? This looks great. Uh, but in the meantime, that's what we're looking at. There are a number of stocks in this area, in the brokerage area, that I think that are they're going to give us fantastic clues. So now I just wanted to show you the GDX. So the question came in, has the GDX broken out? No, it hasn't, because look, it's got the channel wave inside track repellent zone right there in this down channel. It's the channel we were talking about in the XLE and it needs it's a little too fat I like it when it's very thin it doesn't matter how long the longer the better when it breaks out it goes straight to the left side peak uh, higher peak and then it breaks into that and goes to the second highest in this case it's going to need much more work so the GDX pink nine period moving average but this is important I wanted to mention this um, when I was doing Tommy's show but I, I there were so many other questions you see the way you've got this W, let me just put it over here. You see the GDX, GDX. You see this W formation in the nine period moving average, the pink nine period moving average? And it's rising. That to me is important. If you look at the silver, uh, I'll go to SLV because people might not have silver. Yeah, silver is the ETF. Uh, this is the uh, trust, silver trust, I share silver trust. This is different. It's making lower, a lower W formation. So in a sense, all of a sudden, the GDX is playing catch up. Now, what's fascinating, if you look at the, GD, the GC continuous contract, gold, it's not doing that. It's more like silver. So suddenly the miners are telling me there's a lot going on that's really important that is – how can I put it without getting a little too excessively bullish or too excessively bearish? Um, there's been an internal, an in, the, the internal infrastructure has started to repair itself. Now, let me go and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in the actual chart itself. So, look, you've been making lower lows and lower highs. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a higher high. I'm sorry, a higher low. Is this, if this makes a higher high, but above 30.79 you might be getting a cup formation it's a work in progress so the question came in ASA and look this is what this is a clue ASA is having a fabulous day it's up 56 cents at 18.07 as ASA gold and precious metals our gold our silver stock that we've got has had a really nice move to the upside I'll be back The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, 
giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So we're looking at ASA Gold. It's trading at 1807. It's up 56 cents and it's acting really well. The nine period moving hasn't turned positive yet. I think it will. The MAGD is just as we're speaking, um, turning positive. The on-balance volume is still rallying. It's good. Stochastic's way, way low, 35%, but it's starting to rally strongly. And look at that weekly. The 9 is way over the 14. This is really nice action. So, yes, uh, Peaky, I like it very much. And I'm just going to say to you, it's proved that at least under duress, the whole area of the 17s uh, has been really good support. Um, if it closes under 16.80, I think that's going to start to weaken a little bit the weekly chart, but so far that hasn't happened. It's acting really nicely. So that's what I'm trying to point out that I've been talking about this for a little while, that even within sectors, for instance, here you've got Micron down quite sharply, down almost eight. You've got NVIDIA uh, down almost two. And this is a sector that was on fire with the market of the Dow up 100 now, um, S&P up 8. You would anticipate that the, any other time the, the semis would be up a good, a good percentage. And right now, they're down. So I'm just saying to you that there's a rotation going on. But even within the sectors, look, Al, uh, what was I looking at? Look at how badly advanced micro devices is done. Um, look at that, 227.30 back in March. And here it is at 159. So its leadership is narrowed and narrowed and narrowed. Now you've got in the MAG7, you've got um, Netflix at all-time highs. When I last looked, it was yesterday, I think it was. Uh, no, just under all-time highs today. It's also just, it's at 667.89 is the high today. The high that was made on the 20th of June was six, uh, let's see if I can see it, six, 689.68 and it's a leg b in the weekly chart and a leg d in the monthly you remember the big rectangle can go all the way to just under right on or just above the previous high it doesn't matter how much time it's usually after a huge v-shaped re recovery so it goes from 700.99 in november of 2021 to may's low of 2022 of 162 that is a huge decline and then what does it do? It comes all the way back. It took a lot longer. It only took one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven, seven months to do that on the way down. And look at it, it's taken from May to we've passed May two years, just over two years to get to leg D. But it's done it. And this is this is kind of where you'd expect it to get a little bit tired. But look at that. Um, a B. Oh, if that's is B, it means you go all next week to higher highs. All right, just for now, I'm going to call that an A. I, I need to do a little bit of work. It's one of those where I need, I can't do it glibly. Just say, oh, just use the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is an F right here, um, and I'm going to call it an F slash B. All right, just for the moment, 
and uh, just to, so I can think it through. So far, there's nothing negative except the stochastic did go under 80 percent, but it's almost at all time highs. And that's why I'm saying that um, this is an area that we've got to be just a little careful because you start to see this rotation start to take its toll on some of the stocks, not some of the stocks some of the time or some of the stocks all the time. It's just it's kind of rotational and it's even confusing because you can't see it sometimes because the index itself could hold up quite nicely. And that's what I was saying with the GDX. If you think of it as an index, it is the miners. And it's saying I'm holding very well. Within that, I've got some stocks that are doing very nicely. And that's important. Okay, I want you to go to the next question was, oops, where did I go? Um, yeah, so tomorrow I'll do a lot more work on my, uh, Microsoft. Uh, it will be very important because it's finally got to that D that we're anticipating. And it's doing the Chapman Wave store play formation. Uh, P A L L P A L L. Um, yes. It, so the question came up the other day about uh, palladium, and I said, you know, I can't, I can't look at these single leg to the upside. This has done it in one move. It did it at a peak A, B, C, and D, a full buy mode uh, back in May, and then gave it all back and went to lower lows. Um, this is a single leg A up. We saw that in stocks like. Uh, 3D systems, single leg A up to a peak D, and then whoosh, look where it did. It's now at a low, multi-year low, multi-decade low, no, multi-year low. So I'm talking about only patterns. So um, you've got to be very careful with these big single leg moves to the upside because they, how they hold on the way back is going to be important. Okay, so now I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. Um, I did want to touch on, mm, I wrote it down, I wrote it down. Oh, IOT, IOT, and that is a trucking company. That is uh, tra Trax Fleets, Samsara Inc., Trax Fleets Logistics. Peak E in the monthly chart, peak F right at the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone in the uh, in the weekly chart, announced forming this. Oh, you remember yesterday we were talking about the expanded wedge? No, the diamond. I said, we had this den I said, oh, my God, a diamond. And then it turned out, yes, a diamond can be very important, but it could always, most of the time, it's really not. The, the pattern just unfolds the way it unfolds. So this is going to be possible. But what we've got here is the weekly chart had a sharp pullback, and you had this beautiful left side, right side arch formation. This is called bar symmetry from the low of the 20, 22nd of uh, April of 2979. It goes to a higher May the 15th of 42.28, arches over at peak D and comes down. I drew from this is the technique that I teach in my webinars. From this particular level right here, you've got your inside track support target line and dashed line pink, and it went right to that. It, took, it was a day early, and it went below it, and now it's above it, and it's above the 200 period moving average. So is this a recovery? 32.31, um, up 1.16. Well, I have to tell you that it's in an area, Samsara Inc., IOT is the symbol, 32.29, up $1.14. It's an area that I've had, I'm sure I've still got it. Let me just double check. No, it's not there. It's this one here. IOT. Yes, I've got it, and I've got it, um, I've got it in my watch list. It's a stock that I've been following for a long time. I wanted to, I missed the move to the upside, but it was also so jagged that that kind of volatility I didn't want to be part of. But I think this move now is the one that says if you want volatility, if IOT is able to fill the gap in the 33 area and trade to 36 over the next, uh, I'm going to give it at least seven or eight trading days. That takes you right into mid July. I think it's telling me a story about a lot of things, maybe in the transportation area, but in or trucking, but it's going to be a positive story. So I, it's on my watch list. Now, I can't remember what the question was, do I buy it, what do I do? Uh, I'm just going to say, if I was looking at it right now, with the technicals improving, and it's so far holding on the daily basis at 32.27 above the 31.90, 200 period moving average, I would nibble. I think it's a little early because I think it still has to digest a little bit, the pink 9 period moving average. So I'd either wait and have patience to see how it holds 31.10 to 30.90 is the area that I'd like to look at it and do an assessment to see whether the stochastic has moved to the 47% area. 
So yeah, so that was the question there. So where do we stand? I'll do that as soon as we return because I think this choppiness is telling me that people are afraid to miss out because they're also afraid. So you've got two afraid. Do two afraid make a wrong? No, do two wrongs make them afraid? Yep, look at that big move down to the change of period moving out from the peak D in the one minute chart, peak E in the five minute chart. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, let me just, just real quickly, I'll do a lot more tomorrow. So the dollar question came in the, in the Tiger YouTube about the dollar. Uh, where do I think it's going? I think the dollar's acted okay. I actually, we've been long since 2018, so I'm, you know, what can I say? I think that the dollar, when you look at the monthly chart and the weekly chart, it's just doing okay. It's not fantastic. It's not, it's not bad. It's just, it's doing okay. Um, it's good, but nothing more because it's gone back to the 200 pre moving average, and now it's gone to a peak, a leg E, maybe a peak E. Underneath the previous high in the 106s, so and it's trading 105.83. So I think it's doing okay. That's what I really my that's my point. I do. I think it's going to the 107s. I at this particular point, I think other factors are going to be involved uh, in this whole conglomeration of all, all the, the the pieces of the puzzle that we look at in the chess set. So dollar is part of it. But the move that I've been talking about in gold that is holding quite well, there's this dreaded H pattern that's held well yesterday's low, and now it's just about this is a process. And the weekly chart says, yep, it's a process because gold is holding well. But the GDX, the way the GDX has acted today is saying, you know, there might be a little bit more. It's still a mixed market within the gold miners. 
but at least it's telling us that there is a little bit of strength and the weekly chart is is improving so let me just do this real quick we've added to our short positions and it's all trading it's not I'm not a big bear or anything like that yes we've raised cash why because there are some fantastic stocks I would like to get that have pulled back sharply and they might even pull back a little bit more those are the ones I want for the next big move we want to have cash we our stocks that we've got have done very nicely but there are others that, that are really ones that make up the whole portfolio that I like to look at. That's number one. Number two is within the context of uh, the Dow, it's holding really well. Uh, technically, it should be in a buy mode. I should be expecting the is that we've got um, long positions the Dow from way back. They've done well. We've got a short on -on trading position and they're still holding that now. It's almost like it's insurance. I'm watching very close. This market is just, it's waiting for something. And we'll know in a couple of days. Have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes.